It's time, and you've tuned in to the Franklin County Varsity Sports Report. Now here's your host, Bobby C. Hello, and welcome to the Franklin County Varsity Sports Report. I'm Bobby C. Want to welcome you here today. Very exciting week this week because we have a lot of paperwork in front of us today. It's all about the upcoming tournament that we have in girls tennis. Also, we have the tournament for softball and baseball. Want to thank our sponsors, the Four Leaf Clover Restaurant in Berniston, also by Hubie's Restaurant and Tavern Avenue Way in Turner's Falls, Albert Hearing Services, 33 Waddell Street in Greenfield, and by Denny's Pantry. They're located on Berniston Road in Greenfield. Remember, we're here 24-7 at gctv.org. We're also on the FCAT located in South Deerfield. And we also want to thank our producer, Philippe Simone, for the wonderful job he does each and every week right here at our GCTV studios in Greenfield. Well, boy, do we have a lot going on. And boy, as you can see, there's lots of paperwork in front of me. What we're going to do is we're going to talk about the teams. We're going to talk about what their opportunities are. And maybe we might have a few local matchups that could happen as well, which could make it even more exciting for the big sports fan to be able to come out and support these local kids. It would be really nice if we were able to see a couple of local teams play each other. That way, there's a lot more of a fun playoff vibe that you're going to be able to feel when you're able to attend these games. Well, first of all, why don't we get started in girls tennis. We have two teams locally in girls tennis that will compete in the Western Mass uh, Division Three tennis tournament, and that is going to be Greenfield, and Greenfield ended up having a number three seed, and they are undefeated on the year at 15-0. The other team is Mohawk, who picked up a four seed, and they ended up 14-4. So what will happen is both teams end up with a bye in the first round, and the quarterfinal rounds take place, believe it or not, today for Mohawk. They will be taking on Sabus, so they will take on Sabus, which is the number five seed in this tournament. Greenfield will take on the winner of Mount Greylock and St. Mary's. Now the winner of that will take on Greenfield. That will be at Greenfield High School, and that'll be at 3.30, and this game will be played on Thursday, okay? So we're recording this show for you on a Wednesday. Um, it is Wednesday that we get the recording done, so when you see this show, when we have it all posted up on Facebook for you, and also listening on GCTV this week, you'll know that this is really all happening right now. So the reason why we got a little bit of a late start on our recording this week is because we wanted to make sure that we had the proper information to be able to share with you this week about the Western Mass tournaments. So Greenfield, 15 and all, fantastic talent on this team. They are looking to ride high to see if they can be able to play for a girls Western Mass Division three title. But one seed down, is that Mohawk team led by Lily Seaver, who they have really had a great year this year at 14 and four. They are the four seed. So if they can get by Sabas, they will get to the semifinals and they will take on the winner of either South Hadley and they could either be playing against Pope Francis or Mount, uh, Mount Everett. So a really good luck goes out to the girls tennis team. They've had an excellent year and we could talk a little bit about what they were able to do while we have this opportunity here on the Franklin County Varsity Sports Report. They ended up winning their first game of the year against Pope Francis. Then they beat the Renaissance School. Then they beat St. Mary's. They beat Turner's. They ended up beating Mohawk. They beat Frontier. They beat Brattleboro. They beat Palmer. So this team is really, really good. And they also beat the Pioneer Valley Christian School as well. So this team is going in flying high with their excellent record at 15-0. So we wish the best of luck to the Green Wave of Greenfield, their girls tennis team. Want to let you know that we have some information that happened on the um, big state tournament. And they got ready for New England's. And the New England Regional will have a couple of local representatives in track and field that we want to share with you. Because that New England championship will be taking place this Saturday 
at the University of New Hampshire at UNH in Durham, New Hampshire. And two qualifiers will be there. One of them is Megan Davis, who already has been to the national tournament already. But she, for her high school, is now going to the New Englands. And also, another gentleman will also be joining her. And really exciting to be able to know that he gets to be a part of this wonderful trip as well to the New Englands. And that is Vasilio for Frontier. So between those two, they will be representing Western Massachusetts in the big tournament that is happening over at UNH. I will say that there were some great kids that worked hard all season long, but it was nice to see Jack Vasilio finish the best that he had this season in the pole vault, where he cleared his personal best of 12 feet three inches to qualify for the uh, New Englands. And of course, Megan, she just been saying it all all season long. She has been able to have her best time of the season and she will be going to the New England championships as well. So just awesome to be able to see these two do so well at Fitchburg State University this past week as they get ready for the New Englands. So we wish the best of luck to both those kids. Also, we did have the boys tennis. There was one team that qualified and they ended up getting beat in the first round and that is the Turner's Falls boys. Uh, they ended up only getting one point. The final was four to one, and that one point was by a forfeit. So they ended up forfeiting a doubles match, but they ended up losing to the Mounties of Mount of Monument Mountain High School. So they are out of the tournament. So congratulations to Jimmy Vaughn and his group of buds. They did a nice job. Brian Poirier, Will Turn, those kids, they did a great job this year. Just want to say congratulations to the doubles team of Brody Trott and Josh Gollin. They also did very well, too. So congratulations, Turner's Falls. Too bad you guys got beat in the first round, but you definitely had a very successful season. And right here from us at the Franklin County Varsity Sports Report, we want to say congratulations. Well, one of the main reasons why we're here is we're here to talk about two huge tournaments that really get a lot of attention. You know, unfortunately, there isn't as much attention that goes out to some of the tennis. You don't see as much attention going out to track and field as they do when it comes to softball and baseball. And it's weird because you say to yourself, well, why don't they get the credit that they deserve? You know, that's a really good question. But here at the Franklin County Varsity Sports Report, the reason why we do this show is we wanna make sure that we talk about everybody. We talk about every sport in every season. But when it comes to the spring sports, when it really comes down to it, the big talks are about softball and baseball. And that's exactly what we're gonna get into right now. They had the pairings that were set up yesterday. A lot of people were very pleased with some of the seeds that they got. We'll talk about that. We'll talk about a couple of teams that got a little more respect with their record. And we can talk about why they did so well and we will do that in the next 45 minutes right here on the Franklin County Varsity Sports Report. I'm your host, Bobby C. I want to thank our sponsors, the Four Leaf Clover Restaurant in Burniston. Also want to thank our friends over at Denny's Pantry, Burniston Road in Greenfield, Hubie's Restaurant and Tavern, Avenue Way in Turner's Falls, and by Lisa Albert of Albert Hearing Services, 33 Riddell Street in Greenfield. I will tell you I'm a little on the horse side this week and it's because the pollen has definitely hit me pretty good. It's like snowing white out there. So yes, snow white has definitely been around the state of Massachusetts and uh, I surely have gotten a piece of it, that's for sure. As a Little League coach for the last 24 years, I come out in the springtime and coach these kids and I'll tell you, um, sometimes this, the pollen can really get the best of you and it surely got the best of me today. All right, so let's, uh, we'll move on. You'll hear a little, little horse, a frog here, a frog there. Here a frog, there a frog, everywhere a frog frog. All right, let's start out with Western Mass baseball. You know, one thing that we can say is when it comes to baseball, there's some really good teams that are out there right now. And we have one locally that is really, really good. And that is our Frontier Boys. 
and they ended up getting a very nice seed, which was well-deserved, and I want to congratulate them on the seed they got because when you think about how much work and preparation they had to put in this season, they really did do exactly what they needed to do to get a good seed. Also, Greenfield started off like wildfire, 6-0, and all. ends up ending the season at 10-10. and 10. They barely got in, but they did get a little respect with that 10-10 and 10 record. We'll talk about that. What about our Pioneer Boys? Yes, the Pioneer Boys came all the way back to be able to make tournament. Great job done by them. And what about Brian Winslow and his team from the Franklin County Tech School? Started off a little tough, but boy, they really started to turn their season around. And they are represented in the tournament as well. So let's get right to it right now. I want to talk about where we're at. We'll do a little blurb on each one of these teams. And then, of course, we'll get into softball as well. Well, in baseball's Western Mass Division IV tournament, we can tell you that Pioneer, they end up playing a game on Monday. They will be taking on St. Mary's, and St. Mary's is the number three seed, and they ended up with a six seed, Pioneer, so they will take on a very good team who has a really good pitcher as well. But, you know, they've been able to skid by with a couple of nice pitching performances throughout the year from a couple of gentlemen, Jacob Hubbard, also by Cody Letourneau, a couple of guys who uh, have been able to do what they can to help this team out. They really could use some really good hitting. I think the hitting is gonna help them. They're gonna have to find a way because this St. Mary's team is no schlout. They're really good. Even though they're 13 and seven on the year, they have had a very good performance from one of their top pitchers who's done well throughout the year. They weren't going to get the number one seed because the number one seed, of course, is Hopkins Academy, led by one of the top athletes that they have in this area by the name of Jonathan Morrison. John Morrison, I will tell you right now, is going to Division I baseball. He's an amazing pitcher, and he has had a great season. And he is going to hopefully try to carry his Hopkins Academy team to a Western Mass title. But the number two seed went to McCann Tech. St. Mary's did get the three seed in Division IV. Also, the five seed goes to a really uh, team that didn't really do too well this year. And I was really surprised that they got a higher seed than Pioneer, and that is Smith Academy. They end up going in at 7-11, and 11, but they made it into the tournament because of the golden rule. All you have to do is place first or second in your division and you automatically get into the tournament. That's how it works, okay? So Smith Academy did make it in as the number five seed. Pioneer goes in at the sixth seed, their record 11 and nine. Westfield Tech goes in at number seven at 11 and seven. Mount Everett comes in at the eighth seed at 10 and seven. And the ninth seed at 12 and eight is the Franklin County Tech. And then Smith Vocational comes in at nine and nine as your 10 seed. Personally, I think that the Franklin County Tech School has really started to turn their program around. And I think that it was a good year for Coach Winslow and his team. And I'm so happy for them because of what they were able to do this year and to get into the tournament. Now, where will they lie? Well, I can tell you right now that they have to play a preliminary game and they will be playing Mount Everett. And the winner of that game tomorrow up at Mount Everett will have to take on the number one seed Hopkins Academy team. So you want to talk about a tough task for Coach Winslow. He's definitely got the boys to be able to go out, do their best on the road in game one against Mount Everett, but it only gets a lot harder from there because John Morrison will pitch against the winner of that game, which means that you're going to see John Morrison up against either the Tech or Mount Everett. He might only pitch just a few innings even. Who knows? Depends on how well their offense does at Hopkins because they could use him in the semifinal game because he will take on the winner of that Hopkins game. Just say the Tech wins. So if Tech goes and plays Hopkins, the winner of that game will take on the winner of Ware and Smith Academy in a semifinal matchup. 
So that's where that stands. Let's talk about the Franklin County Tech School team for just a moment. Let's talk about where it all started for them, okay? They started off on their first game. They ended up getting beat to, to Mohawk, 5 nothing. Then they end up losing to Athol, their second game of the year. They got beat 9-4. Then they beat Pathfinder, 5-2, to go to two, uh, one and two. Then they go two and two with a win over the Pioneer Valley Christian School, six to one. Then they lose to McCann Tech and Westfield Technical Academy. They win against Duggan. They lose against Cy Tech. They come back, they beat Turner's, they beat the Pioneer Valley Christian School. Then they lose to Gateway. They win big against Commerce. They win big against Duggan. And then here it goes. They beat Pioneer. They beat Putnam. They beat Westfield Technical Academy. They beat Smith Vocational. Then they lose to Turner's in a tough one, seven to six. Then they lose a one nothing game to Pioneer. And then they finally come out and they win against Smith Vocational for the second time during the year, 10 to two. So really think about this, of their last, really their last eight games, nine games, they lose by one run to Turner's and Pioneer, and then they win the rest. That's awesome, man. Coach Winslow, you gotta be very pleased with the opportunity that your team has to be able to perform in this first round matchup against Mount Everett. And I wish you guys nothing but the best of luck. I hope that things go well. I know you got a couple of guys that you're uh, probably thinking about who you're gonna pitch. I noticed that uh, Max Lay has been uh, doing pretty well. Um, I'm, I just hope your hitting is what comes through that's been doing really well for you guys. I hope that you can get those guys to be able to come out in the bats. And you got Spencer Talega, and you know, hopefully he'll be able to uh, give you some good innings as well. So best of luck to Coach Winslow and this team from the Franklin County Tech School. Great run and a great job done by your team this year, Coach. I'm very, very impressed with what you guys were able to do down the stretch. Let's talk about this Pioneer team who's in the same division of Division Four for the Western Mass Tournament, but they're on the other side of the bracket, and they will open up with that game against St. Mary's on the road. That game will be on Monday. Let's talk about the season for Pioneer. Well, they end up with a loss to Belchertown in their first game of the year, three to one. Then they come off and they beat Turner's 8-1. Then they end up losing to Greenfield. Then they end up winning against Smith Vocational. They end up losing to Hopkins Academy. They end up losing to South Hadley. Then they win a couple against Smith Vocational and Mohawk. Then they get beat by Smith Academy and then they come back and they beat Mahar and East Hampton, which was a nice win for them over East Hampton. Then they got beat by Athol. Final score in that one was 7-0. And then it was one of those, we got to get our act together. They lose to the Franklin County Tech School, 9-7. But then on the 16th of May, things started to turn around for this Pioneer Valley Regional team. They beat Mahar. They beat Mohawk. They do lose to East Hampton. They also come back and beat South Hadley. Then they get beat five to one to Athol and they win their last two games, an important game that they beat against the Franklin County Tech School, one nothing. And then they beat Smith Academy, 11 to four. So really a nice job done at the end of the year to be able to get that 11 wins that they needed. You only need 10 to get in, but they were able to get 11 and this Pioneer team gets a six seed out of 10 teams in this division. And the Tech School, who had a better record at 12 and eight, really, I think what hurt them was the division they play in. But I look back and I say, hey, they played Pioneer. They played Mohawk. This Tech School did go out and they did take on teams that they could play like Turners. So they did what they needed to do. It really doesn't matter right now. In tournament time, you either win and go on, or you lose and you're out. It's that simple. Everybody is in the same boat. 
So in Division Four, we have Pioneer and the Franklin County Tech in boys baseball. Want to welcome you to the Franklin County Varsity Sports Report. I'm Bobby C. And hey, hey, we have got a lot of excitement going on today and very excited about this great tournament. This time of year is always fun. Um, I, I have to admit, I do enjoy the baseball and the softball, but the one thing that I've really been intrigued with is really the softball. I don't know why I've gotten so sucked in over the last two or three years, but I have. And it takes nothing away from the boys and the baseball. I just think that the teams that we've been able to have and the quality of teams that we've had in girls softball around here is pretty special. And I've been able to be a part of it. I have announced games between Greenfield and Turner's. I've announced games between Turner's and Pioneer Girls. The game that was a really tight one back a couple of seasons ago. Um, had a chance to go down to UMass last year where the Pioneer girls made it into the Final Four. They took on Mount Everett. And also Greenfield took on Turner's in a game down at UMass as well at Sorotino Field. So there's just a lot of excitement. And we have the boys baseball to talk about. And then we'll get into our girls softball. I want to thank our sponsors, Four Leaf Clover Restaurant in Berniston. Denny's Pantry, located on Berniston Road in Greenfield. Hubie's Restaurant and Tavern, Avenue A in Turner's Falls, and by Lisa Alber of Alber Hearing Services, 33 Riddell Street in Greenfield. Check out our show on Facebook. You know, it's cool because when we post it on my show, our, our show, when we post it on Facebook, all you got to do is click on, takes you right to GCTV, and boom, here we are. We're 24-7, gctv.org. We're also on the FCAT down in South Deerfield. And with our Frontier teams that are involved this year, well, we want to make sure that you tune into the show because we will keep you updated on both the two tournament teams that we have for the girls' softball and the boys' baseball team. Well, speaking of baseball, let's continue on to Western Mass, Boys' Division Three. We do have a couple of locals from Franklin County that are involved, but let's run down the field for you here. The number one seed goes to Taconic up in the Berkshires with a record of 16 and four. The number two seed, the Red Hawks of Frontier Regional with a record of 19 and one. The three seed goes to Monument Mountain at 16 and four. Hampshire Regional, they'll pick up the four seed at 13 and five. Mount Greylock picks up the fifth seed with a 13 and five record. Southwick gets a six seed, 13 and seven. Munson, the seventh seed at 12 and six. Cy Tech gets the eighth seed at 14 and six. Belchertown picks up the ninth seed at 10 and eight. Greenfield squeaks in at number 10 with a record of 10 and 10. 10, the magic number for the wave. Also with a 10 and 10 record, the 11 seed goes to Athol. Then we have East Hampton, the 12 seed at 10 and 8, and Palmer comes in as the 13 seed at 10 and 10. Greenfield, they will open up. Their game will be on the road at Munson. This game will be played now I'm on the show today, so it'll be Thursday. And Thursday, a 4 o'clock game for them as uh, they take on Munson High School, the seven seed. The winner of this game will take on the number two seed, Frontier Red Hawks. Monday afternoon, 4 o'clock, down at South Deerfields Field, which is going to be exciting because I'll tell you what, if Greenfield does pull off this win, there will be a huge crowd on Monday afternoon over at Frontier Regional between these two teams. Now, Athol, not too far away, they are taking on Southwick, and they will take on Monument Mountain in the quarterfinals if they're able to pull off the upset. So we could see Frontier and Greenfield. And let's talk a little bit about both these teams for a minute. Let's first talk about Greenfield. Greenfield came out like wildfire 
everybody the first couple weeks of the season in April was talking about Greenfield this, Greenfield that. Greenfield's got a great team this year. Well, let me tell you why. Their first game, they came out and beat a very good East Hampton team, and they beat them convincingly 7-1. to one. Then they played Athol, another team that made tournament. They beat them 3-2. to two. Then they beat Mohawk in their third game of the year, 8-6. to six. Then they beat Pioneer. They beat Athol again. They start off the season at 5-0. and all. Then the Wave. They start to do the collapse. They end up losing to Smith Academy. They lost to Southwick. They lost to Palmer. They lost to Frontier. They lost to Belchertown. They beat Turner's Falls. They lose to Hopkins Academy. And it just gets tougher and tougher from there. They end up losing a game that they played over at Cooperstown at Doubleday Stadium to South Hadley. Then they end up losing to Frontier. They end up winning against South Hadley in a game that was played back at South Hadley High School. They won 7-6. to six. Then they lose to Belchertown. They end up beating Turner's. They lose to Hampshire. They lose to Hopkins. They lose to Mahar. They end up 10 in 10. They really started off like wildfire. So really, if you think about this, folks, they had 18 games. And they ended up, in the end, really only winning five of their last 13. And that made it tough for Greenfield. And their biggest problem is not their pitching. It's really their offense. Major offensive problems at Greenfield. A couple of guys that have really been able to help them with their offense, Colin Cloutier, Hunter Campbell, Joel Peabody. Those guys have been able to hit. Joel Peabody's one of the great pitchers for them. And, you know, another kid, you can't take anything away, and you say to yourself, oh, my goodness, you know, what is going on? Owen Phelps has pitched really good this year for Greenfield, but he's getting no run support. You know how you sometimes say to yourself, there's that really good year with the Red Sox where they get all the run support they need, but the pitcher's not that great. He's got an ERA of like 4.20, but he's got a great record because every time he goes out to pitch, the team scores a lot of runs and they win. This is the opposite for him. This is where a guy comes out, he pitches – a 3.25 ERA, and you can't play four guys over the game, and this guy ends up losing games because of no run production. You know, Joel Peabody went through the same thing, too, with some of the great games he's had. And you think about it, I was reading some of those scores. Let me read some of these scores again quickly. Um, three to two. Three to two. Two nothing. Four nothing. One nothing. One nothing. 5-4, 5-1, There you go. That tells the story right there. Greenfield Green Wave, you got to hit. You got to get the bats alive if you guys want to have a chance to meet this Frontier team on Monday. I wish you guys nothing but the best of luck in your game against Munson. Love to be able to see you guys on Monday afternoon down at South Deerfield. Be a great game between Frontier and the green wave. I will say that it's gonna come down to some good hitting to get by Munson, but then you know what you're gonna get when you get to Frontier, and we'll talk about them right now. This Frontier team is legit. They're 19 and one, they have good pitching, they have good hitting. I mean, they have a lot of guys who can hit the ball. That is why this team is that good. And when we run down how their season went, you'll understand what I'm talking about. Okay? Here we go. Their first game of the year was against Mahar. They win 11-2. Their second game was against Mohawk. They win 13-0. They took on a very good, very good Northbridge team in an independent game against a quality team in the state of Massachusetts, and they won that 4-3. 
They beat Smith Academy 11-4. They beat Athol 12-2. They beat East Hampton 15-2. They beat Belchertown in a great game. Final was 2-1. They beat Greenfield 5-0. They beat Turners 16-5. They beat South Hadley 3-2. They beat a very good Belchertown team 22-7. They also played Hopkins Academy. They took on the best pitcher in Western Mass, John Morrison. Morrison did get the best of Frontier in that game. Final was 2-0. They weren't able to hit off him. They beat Palmer, 6-0. They beat Greenfield, 4-0. They beat Turners, 9-2. They beat South Hadley, 5-0. They came back and beat Hopkins earlier, uh, later in the season. They beat a good Amherst team, and they beat Hampshire Regional, another good team, 4 nothing. So this Frontier team is really good. They have a lot of good kids who can hit. They have great pitching. Ben Arnold is their number one guy. Also, Matt Hildreth is in there too. I heard that Dylan Appenall ends up getting hurt. I don't know how much he'll be pitching for them, but I'll tell you right now, but between the two guys of Arnold and Hildreth, they're going to be well needed in this tournament, and we could see an opportunity of Greenfield taking on this Frontier team in their first game for Frontier on Monday afternoon at 4. Coach Williams should be very pleased with what the team he has this year. He's got a lot of real talented kids. You know, you think about Ben Arnold, and not only is he a good pitcher, but he can also hit the ball well. You got Connor Wakis. You got Jacob Bryant. You got Dylan Appenau who can hit too. You got guys that can also come off and, and be able to have good games too, like Evans. You know, he, he can hit the ball too. I mean, this team has a lot of different weapons. They're really good. And Coach Williams should be very pleased with the season that he's had this year with this team. I know that I think they're wonderful to watch. And Greenfield, I'm going to tell you this right now, they're going to have a really tough time against them if they end up playing them because they are that good and they will have Ben Arnold on the mound for the first round of their tournament play and he has had a very exceptional year he will definitely be an all-star in Western Mass this season so there you have it that takes care of our baseball all right that was really exciting. I mean, let's think about it, man. We got some great stuff going on in Western Mass baseball for the kids. Once again, let's run down the teams that are in. Pioneer Boys, in. Franklin County Tech Boys, in. Turner's Falls is out. Greenfield is in. Also, Mohawk is out. And we also have to say that Frontier is definitely in, okay? So those are our local teams. We only have four that are going to be represented from our particular Franklin County area, and that is the Tech, Pioneer, Greenfield, and Frontier. I want to welcome you to the Franklin County Varsity Sports Report. I'm Bobby C. Hello there. Hey, what an exciting week we have here on TV. You know what's exciting about being able to do this show each and every week is that we've talked about the progress of all these teams all during the spring season. Now we can talk about the teams who have earned their way to be able to play for a playoff spot. Now these are teams that are all in and it's one and done. There's no best of, no such thing. It's one and done. One bad game and you're out. String a few good games together and you're in. That's what makes it fun. Want to thank our sponsors, the Four Leaf Clover Restaurant in Berniston. Also by our friends at Denny's Pantry, Berniston Road in Greenfield. Albert Hearing Services, 33 Riddell Street in Greenfield. And by our friends at Hubie's Restaurant and Tavern Avenue A in Turner's Falls. Philippe Simone, thank you so much for everything you do for me. Thank you, Chris Collins, down at the FCAT, down in South Deerfield. You guys are awesome, man. So lucky to be able to have each and every one of you all be part of what we like to call the Franklin County Varsity Sports Report team. Well, I love softball. Why? How can you not with what we have here in this area? Two of the top teams in all of Western Massachusetts, no matter what division, are going to be battling it out in the Western Mass Tournament. Let's talk about 
how things roll. We have our Division Three Western Mass Girls Softball Tournament. And guess what? I have the seedings right here. The number one seed, three-time state champion, Turner's Falls. They're going in this year as the Thunder. Turner's Falls Thunder will be what they will be represented as as their team name for this tournament. You know, you talk about people that have been debating about this whole Indians thing, and they're saying, you know, once an Indian, always an Indian. You know, we're gonna we're we're, we're now the Indians. That we're gonna stay the Indians. Whatever. That is fine with me. Whatever you feel, you gotta feel. You feel it. All right. But when you see the headlines in the paper, or you see information in Mass Live of what goes on, they're not gonna be called the Indians, folks. They're going to be called the Turner's Falls Thunder. And let's run down how things are in Division Three. Turner's Falls picks up the number one seed. They had a huge independent schedule against the toughest teams in the state. They end up the season at 17-3, and three, including a loss to Greenfield. Mount Everett, the team that went last year to the Final Four, who took on Pioneer to take on Turner's and got beat by Turner's. They are the number two seed in this bracket. Number three, McCann Tech at 16 and four. Mount Greylock comes in, fourth seed at 12 and eight. Fifth seed, very good team this year, Smith Academy. The girls go in at 14 and four. Hopkins Academy, the sixth seed at 12 and six. Gateway Regional, the seventh seed at 14 and six. The eighth seed, Ware High School, coming in at 10 and 8. Commerce comes in as the ninth seed at 10 and 10. Westfield Technical comes in at 8 and 6 as the 10th seed. And Smith Vocational School comes in as the 11th seed at 9 and 11. So, Turner's Falls, they get a bye. They take on the winner of Ware and Commerce. That game will be played Sunday night, 7 o'clock over at Turner's Falls High School. A Sunday night game between Ware and Commerce, the winner of that game, will take on Turner's seven o'clock at Turner's Falls. Turner's, if they win that game, they will move on to take on the winner of Mount Greylock and Smith Academy. So really our local representative of our Franklin County area in Division Three is Turner's Falls and they have the number one seed. Let's run this down for you. How did the Turner's Falls Lady Indian slash Thunder do? Here we go. Game one, they beat Amherst 14-0. They beat East Hampton, their second game of the year, 12-0. They beat Belchertown 18-1 in game three. They beat Athol 19-4 in game four. Their fifth game of the year, they took on Greenfield. They get beat one nothing. Sam Smith comes up with a huge defensive play. They come up with the one run they need. The wave upsets Turner's Falls early in the year. That was back on April 24th. Then they beat Frontier 8-4. Turner's beats Ludlow 16-3. They beat Mohawk 15-3. They beat Pioneer 14 to one. They beat, they end up losing to a great Wachusett team and they lost in the fifth inning on some errors and some really bad mistakes. They lose 10-8 over at Turner's Falls High School. That game was back on May 8th. That was a tough one for Turner's, losing that game. Then they beat Athol 13 to one. A great game that was played on May 10th. A game where Greenfield came to Turner's. Final score was 2-1. to one. Allie Murphy hit a blast. I mean a bomb. That was a huge hit in the first inning to give Turner's the 2-0 lead. Greenfield had a chance to capitalize being down 2-1. They could not plate Reagan Hickey, the leadoff hitter with a leadoff triple. The, the, you're, you're talking your second, third, and fourth batters. Really good, too. We're talking Smith, Bresciano, 
and Richardson, and they could not play Hickey. They lose that game. Final it was two to one on May 10th. Then Turner's beats Frontier 13-7. They beat Marhar 26 nothing. They beat Marhar again 8 nothing. They beat Mohawk 13-2. They beat a very good team, St. Peter Moran, 5 nothing. They beat Granby 23 nothing. They beat Pioneer 8-2. And then they lost to one of the top teams in Division I, Minichaw Girls, in a great game. Final score was 7-6. to six. This is a really good team. I love this team. I love what this is about. You know, a couple of years ago, they did a wonderful documentary on Coach Mullins and the Turner's Falls Lady Indians. And it was just an amazing amazing documentary that's on WGGB, which is community access. You know, it's a lot like what we are, you know? We're the local hometown place for you to be able to get stuff like this here on GCTV. So I'm, I'm a big fan of that kind of stuff. And when they took the time to do that documentary with Coach Mullins and his team, it really is a testament to how much work goes into this. I don't know if you know this or not, but they practice every day. They really do at the beginning of the year. They go seven days. They usually get a day off during the regular season because there's just so much going on, but they're busy all the time at Turner's. They have a huge coaching staff too. I mean huge. They have, almost have enough coaches to be able to fill every position on the field. I think there's eight coaches on Turner's. So these girls are getting special help, special treatment, special dedication from this coaching staff and they have responded year after year by being able to come out and win championships I you know you talk to coach Mullins and he'll tell you it's about my coaches and my players but that's because that's what coach Mullins does he doesn't take the pat on the back you know he's not LeBron James <laughs> sorry to say he's a guy who's got right here he's got heart and the heart is about the girls and the dedication and the commitment that's being put into this program. But that documentary was awesome. And it really is a true testament to what it takes to be a winner. It takes full teamwork from the coaching staff to the players, to the relationship the players have with each other and the trust and the commitment that they can make as a group. And that is Turner's Falls, the program. Not Turner's Falls, the team. Turner's Falls, the program. This is a program, not a team. And it's all because of Coach Mullins and the dedication that him, Coach Sullivan, and that whole group has put in with those ladies. Fun team to watch. And if you ever get a chance to go over there, get there early enough to watch the infield it's amazing. When they take the field for infield, it's something you've never seen. It's amazing. And it's because of what this team really has. One of the hitters that they better watch out for in Division Three, Allison Murphy. The sophomore has had a powerful season at the plate. How about a 500 average? Five home runs. 24 runs batted in. She's just on a tear. She's had a great year. And I'll tell you, I'm a huge fan of Allie and her team. They're fun to watch, and they've earned everything. You know, someone said, who's going to win Western Mass Division III? I'm telling you right now, I don't even think it's going to be close. I think Turner's walks away with a very easy ride. And I'm going to tell you why. None of those other teams that I mentioned have played anywhere the competition that this Turner's team went out and played this year. Taking on the number one seed in Division Two twice. They end up being co-champions together in Greenfield High School. They took on Wachusett. They took on the team that they took on, St. Peter Moran. They're not afraid to play teams like Minichog, the number one seed in Division One. 
That's how you get good, man. You take on the good teams. You don't take on the cupcakes. You know, there's a girl who's really stepped it up this year with an injury to Peyton Emery earlier in the year. There's a girl by the name of Jade Tyler who has really stepped it up this year, and she has been amazing. You know, if you think about it, she's really been able to show how good of a freshman pitcher she really is. You know, she ends up going in with a record of 15-2 and two this year with an ERA of 1.43. She struck out 114 batters over 73 and one-third innings this season. She's only a freshman, folks. She still has three more years under Coach Mullins. And look at the numbers she's already registered. Just a fun team, man. Turner's Falls girls, Division Three. they will reign again. Well, in Division Two, we have two teams locally. We have Greenfield and we have Frontier. Let's run down the Division Two Western Mass girls softball bracket. Number one seed, the Wave of Greenfield at 16 and two. Hoosick Valley picks up the number two seed at 15 and three. Wakona, the three seed at 14 and six. East Hampton, very young team, very good team, comes in at 16 and four as the four seed. Hampshire Regional comes in at the fifth seed at 10 and eight. Frontier comes in with the sixth seed at 12 and eight. Southwick comes in with the seventh seed at 14 and five. Athol comes in the eighth seed at 12 and eight. Palmer picks up the ninth seed at 14 and six. And Savas, the 10th seed at 16 and four. Greenfield gets a bye, number one seed. They'll take on the winner of Athol and Palmer. That game will be played Monday, six o'clock at GHS Vets Field. I can tell you that the winner of Greenfield's game on Monday will take on either East Hampton or Hampshire Regional in the semifinals. Now Frontier, on the other hand, they got a bye too. They will play their game on Monday, six o'clock. They will take on Wakona High School. That game will be played up in the Berkshires, all right? So Frontier is on the road, Greenfield is home on Monday. Let's talk about Greenfield and Frontier. And I'm gonna talk about Frontier first, and then we'll talk about the Green Wave. Frontier had a pretty busy schedule. I think the reason why they got a good seed. You know, Gary Dean, nice job as your first season coach of Frontier this year. Congratulations, Coach Dean, on a nice season with this group of ladies. I think you have a great little group of folks here. Lauren McDonald, the pitcher. You got Emma Wasilowski. You got really good players. Um, you got Mackenzie Patterson. I mean, I can just go on. You got, you got some good talent here. And uh, it's been nice to be able to see how well your team did this year. You guys came off with a really good start, and then it got a little rough for you. We'll talk about that right now. They lost their first game of the year to West Springfield, 16-1. to Then they beat Belchertown, 13-0. They beat Amherst, 17-0. They beat Palmer 12-2. Now you are 3-1. Got beat by Ludlow 9-1. They beat Taconic 10-6. Then they played against Athol and they won 8-7. They lost to Turners 8-4 in a very good game that was back in April, on April 26th. Then they beat Mohawk 11-2. Then they lose a tough one to Pioneer Valley Regional on May 2nd, where it was a great hit by Olivia Rowe from Pioneer to give them the upset win four to three over the Red Hawks. Then they lose 9-8 to Mount, Mount Greylock. They get beat by Greenfield, eight to three. Come back, win a couple of games against Mahar and Athol. Then they lose to Turner's 13-7. Then they win three in a row against Mohawk, Pioneer, and Mahar. They lose to Greenfield 9-0, and then they beat Munson 13-0, 
final game of the year. So it's been one of those little bit of a roller coaster ride on the way the scheduling was, but they did beat a couple of really good teams, and that is pretty impressive. So we'll have to see how well they end up doing. This softball team from Frontier, I wish you nothing but the best of luck, ladies. I hope you do well in this tournament. Well, the number one seed in girls, and I will say, girls division two is the wave of Greenfield. They've had a great year. They really have. You can't say nothing more than a great season. They win Belchertown in game one. They end up winning 9-2 in game two. Got caught off guard, get beat at Mount Everett. The team that was in the final four last year, well, they're back and they're a two seed in division three. So they end up losing to a very good team, three to two. Then, here we go. We like to call this rock and roll, baby. Greenfield, they win over Mohawk, Turners, Athol, Pioneer, Mahar, Frontier, Mohawk, lose a great game to Turners. We already talked about that one earlier. They beat Amherst 16 to one. Then it all goes from there. They beat Pioneer, Ludlow, East Hampton, Mahar, Athol, Frontier, Green Wave, number one seed in Division Two girls softball. Prediction, who is gonna win the Division Two championship? What do you think? The Wave. Bring it home, baby. The Wave and Turner's Falls, I think the two number one seeds hold serve. They hold championships. That's just my prediction. Lady Wave, they only lost two this year. Who's the amazing hitter for them? How about this name? You ever heard of Sam Smith? She's amazing. She has been just amazing for her team. How about the pitching of Olivia Joy? Olivia Joy has been nothing but just that, a joy to watch, a joy to be able to see what she's been able to do for her team. Just amazing. Great pitcher. So between the great pitching of Olivia Joy, the hitting, that this Greenfield Green Wave team has, the power hitters are Sam Smith and also my friend, Mrs. Richardson, Kelsey Richardson. I love my friend Kelsey. She has had a great year for the Wave this year. Huge help to their team. You got great players like Reagan Hickey and Audrey Bresciano. I mean, I can go on and on. They have people at every position. Kirsten Ward has had a good year this year. I mean, they have a really, really good team and a great attitude too. You know, they got a future ahead of them as well. I will say that they have a really good middle school program right now at Greenfield that's very special. So you're gonna see a lot of really good young talent come up to be able to be a part of Coach Lovett and her family team. I call it the family team because her sister and her father are her assistant coaches. And of course, the group of girls around her. They're a big family. And it really is a family on the coaching staff as well, as her father John and her sister have been just a huge, huge help to this program as well. So I'm just really excited about the wave and the season they've had. Looking forward to a great tournament. I don't know about you folks, but I always say people who work hard should be rewarded. And one thing we could say about each and every one of these teams is, is that they worked hard. Now they're being rewarded. They go to tournament play. One win, you move on. One loss, you're out. Go, have fun, give it the best you got. And who knows, maybe you do reign supreme, bring home the hardware, and be able to play in the state tournament. 
So, Jack Vasilio, Megan Davis, they go to the New Englands in track and field. The girls from Greenfield, the girls from Mohawk, they play for a chance in girls tennis. Our softball teams, we don't have a lot, but we have quality. Frontier girls, Greenfield girls, Turner's girls. Baseball, Franklin County Tech, Pioneer, Greenfield, Frontier. So here we have it. It's all here in one nutshell on the Franklin County Varsity Sports Report. That'll wrap things up. You're updated. Get out, support your teams. Want to thank our sponsors, the Four Leaf Clover Restaurant in Berniston. Also by Denny's Pantry, Berniston Road in Greenfield, Albert Hearing Services, 33 Riddell Street in Greenfield, and by Hubie's Restaurant and Tavern in Turner's Falls. Until we meet again and talk about our winning teams next week, I'm Bobby C. And for my producer, Philippe Simone, have a great week and support your local teams. Where did I put that bone?